This is an anatomy lab. It smells nice. It's not supposed to smell nice. You know what I mean, right? It's an anatomy lab. It doesn't normally smell nice. It's, quite, it's, it's not like super sweet. It's a little bit minty, like, what, what is that? Anyway, uh, okay, so today we're gonna talk about the uh, bursi of the elbow. There are actually quite a lot of them. There are only two or three that are really interesting. So we will remind ourselves what a bursa is. We will look at the major bursi. We will talk about um, alecranon bursitis. And we will then look at the minor ones and that should do us, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to look at the minor ones in detail, we'll just kind of mention them. Okay, first of all then, what is a bursa? Well, I have to actually talk about a synovial joint first for bursae to make sense. Here's a, this is the knee joint. So a synovial joint is lined with articular cartilage, this beautiful uh, smooth, low friction, really likes compression surface to the bone, which makes a good surface for surfaces to roll over one another against. That is then surrounded by a synovial capsule or lined by a synovial membrane. And the cells of that synovial membrane are making synovial fluid. So that capsule keeps the synovial fluid inside the joint capsule up against the articulating surfaces and it's very much like a lubricating oil um, and it means that the joint moves nice and smoothly. So that's a synovial joint. A bursa uses the same structures. There's no articular cartilage but there is a synovial capsule, a synovial membrane and the cells on the inside of that are making a synovial fluid. So we have kind of this low friction, two layers type thing. Let me go put some water in this. All right, here we go. So here's my green balloon. So the rubber of the balloon is the synovial membrane. I put a little bit of water in there and now I can move the surfaces of the balloon against one another. And it's much easier than when it was dry. So a bursa then can go between two things, a tendon and a bone, and it can act as a cushion a buffer so those two things can roll over each other nicely. Now this is just a balloon with water in it. Synovial fluid is, is way better. Synovial fluid, so I used to be an articular cartilage biologist so I spent a lot of time taking joints apart and synovial fluid is a slippery, viscous, it's a non-Newtonian fluid. It's a bit like, it has like the consistency of an egg white but it's way, way slippier. I've got, I've got scars on my fingers. They're gonna to attest to that because I've slipped and cut myself on dissecting joints. Anyway, so a bursa is a synovial membrane, a synovial capsule with a little bit of synovial fluid in it. And that synovial fluid is maintained by the cells inside the synovial membrane. A bursa then is like a lubricated cushion <laughs> at a high pressure point in the body. For example, between tendon and bone, where the bone being much harder than the tendon would damage the tendon as the tendon rubs over it. Or between a particularly sticky outy bit of bone and the skin. So protecting, cushioning that bone um, from the outside world. Okay, so if we're talking about the elbow joint, um, the bursa we're most interested in is at the olecranon, probably. What is the olecranon? All right, well, it is, okay, so humerus, ulna radius. The olecranon is the ulna bone, protubering, 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 protubering protu sticking out posteriorly. And it's an attachment site for the triceps muscle. And the triceps muscle is the major extensor muscle of the elbow. It's a big muscle and having a sticky out bit of bone to attach to, well, it gives a great strong attachment site for the muscle to insert into, but it also can give a mechanical advantage of leverage by, being, by pushing the tendon further away from the joint. So that's the olecranon. Now, um, the olecranon is protected, um, it's cushioned 
by the olecranon bursa, which is also known as the subcutaneous bursa. Subcutaneous means below the skin, and you can move the skin around over your olecranon. It's not tightly tied down. The olecranon bursa can become inflamed, and that would become bursitis, inflammation of the bursa. Olecranon bursitis, so I actually had this a few years ago. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of funny when you know what it is. It might be a bit scary if you don't. Um, but um, if you look at this video of my elbow, there is some trauma there. There's some bruising, there's some scarring or some scabbing. I can't remember what I did, but I probably fell off my bike or something and banged my elbow, or maybe I, I cracked it on something when I was climbing. I'm always banging my elbows on things and normally don't think much about it. But in my case, then the, uh, the bursa became much larger. So inflammation of the olecranon bursa causes that synovial membrane to make more fluid. In inflammation, we see lots of leaking, we see swelling, we often see lots of fluid accumulating, right? So if we get fluid accumulating inside um, the, the bursa, let me fill this up with water a bit more. <laughs> so, so when you're when your olecranon bursa, instead of having a little bit of fluid in there and you don't even notice that you've got a bursa there, when it fills up with fluid, <laughs> it ends up looking like this. And you get this egg on your elbow. In my case, it was painless. It was very fluidy and wibbly and you could like squidge it and it would change shape. Um, and very strange, but that is subcutaneous bursitis, olecranon bursitis. And yeah, it, it very much looked and felt like a little balloon filled with water because the inflammation has just called the bursa, the bursa to fill up with more fluid. Um, you can treat these, but I, I probably maybe put some ice on it and that was about it. I just left it. And you know what, having a little fluidy egg hanging off your elbow means you stop banging it and you don't put it down on things. So you rest it, it doesn't touch anything. And just over time, the, the fluid is resorbed out of the bursa and it all healed up and it all returned to normal in my case. Now, it's sometimes you do have to worry a little bit about, um, because it's below the skin, if the skin and the bursa are punctured, then you could have infection inside the bursa and that's more likely to need treatment. That's kind of a, it's a bigger problem. It's like if you infect a synovial joint space, it's not not a good thing and we'll, yeah, we'll need some care. But that is what bursitis is and olecranon bursitis is the most obvious example. Um, right. All right then, here's an arm with muscles on it. Right arm again. Um, so, whoop. This is the posterior arm. This is the triceps muscle. We can see the little bony bit here sticking out. This is the olecranon. So triceps is pulling on the olecranon. Now we've taken the skin off and we've taken the olecranon bursa off or the subcutaneous bursa. And now we can see the muscle and its tendon inserting into the olecranon. There is an intertendinous bursa near where the tendons of triceps insert into the olecranon. Um, which again lets the, the, the parts of triceps uh, move over one another. And then between the triceps tendon and the olecranon, between the tri triceps tendon and the bone, there is a subtendinous bursa. So it's deep to the tendon, a subtendinous bursa. And that subtendinous bursa allows the triceps tendon to move smoothly over the bone during extension and flexion of the elbow joint. This means that this bursa can be injured and inflamed through um, overuse of, you know, um, this is an overuse injury of extension and flexion, extension and flexion. It's a repetitive strain injury, isn't it? Uh, with repetitive movements, you get micro traumas and those micro traumas then build up and cause inflammation. So the sub tendinous bursa at the elbow of triceps uh, brachii, um, yeah, so that's, that's the other kind of interesting one really. That, that might also uh, be seen in bursitis. Those are the major ones. Now, also at the elbow joint, if we're looking posteriorly at the lecron on there, we've got another bony bit here and a bony bit here. And 
you can palpate this on your own elbow. So there's the electronon. Now, these bony bits here, this is the humerus, so this bone here. This is the medial epicondyle. On the medial side, this is the lateral epicondyle. And they also have subcutaneous bursae, little ditty ones, but there is a subcutaneous bursa between, so, you know, it's the medial epicondyle subcutaneous bursa and the lateral epicondyle subcutaneous bursa, which again, you know, mean that the, these sticky outy bony bits are protected by the bursa and allow the skin to move easily over them and that sort of thing, right? So we've got those minor ones. Um, there's a little muscle around here called anconius, that's got a bursa. Um, there's a bicipitoradial bursa, it's because biceps inserts into the radius. There's a little bursa between the tendon of that and the bone and extensor carpi radialis brevis has a small bursae near its, uh, near its origin between the bone and the tendon again. But let's be honest, we're getting into the weeds here. This, these are little tiny bursae that rarely get mentioned anywhere, don't really cause any problems, very few people are aware of and the sort of thing you'll look up if ever it becomes a thing you need to look up, right? The major ones we need to know about are the electronon bursa, also known as the subcutaneous bursa, between the electronon and the skin, prone to bursitis, as my own elbow has demonstrated, or which, by the way, is also known as a uh, student's elbow, because you, you're on the table, your elbows are on, the t on a hard surface for long periods, that sort of thing. And then there is the subtendinous bursa between the triceps, brachii, tendon, and the bone, which is also prone to bursitis with repetitive um, movements of the elbow. And there are other little ditty ones that are also doing the same jobs that we've described that bursae do for other things in the elbow. Okay, the bursae of the elbow. Um, that's the anatomy of. Um, okay, see you next week.